<laughs> All right. So uh, I'm just going to jump right into it. I'm so excited to meet you, Joy. Um, so you co-edited Barry Jenkins' latest project, The Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. While the series focuses on Black triumph instead of Black trauma in the time of slavery, there are still some very intense scenes. How did you handle working with this kind of footage? And what were the challenges of visually telling the darker side of that story? Yeah, you know, it's one of the things, one of the things that Barry discussed with not only myself, but also the cinematographer, James Blackston, Blackston um, exactly how we wanted to display the trauma and the importance of not um, overly saturating the audience with too many traumatic incidents. Um, for many who read, you know, Colson's novel, Colson Whitehead, um, the author of The Underground Railroad, um, I think he did such a good job at not only telling Cora's uh, story, but also highlighting these different traumatic events that existed um, throughout America. And um, a lot of the events that happen in the book, Colson is pulling from actual historical events and you know, um, applying that to this fictional novel. And so that's one of the things is we didn't wanna just do a disservice to his material, but not by not featuring these events but we also wanted to tell them in a way that's digestible digestible to the audience. And so, you know, for instance, chapter one, Georgia is an episode that I edited and um, Big Anthony, that experience, um, be it traumatic, we didn't focus too much on visually showing what's happening to him. You know, we cut to some of the other slaves and to see how they're experiencing that because I think seeing them is just as impactful as seeing the actual violence that's happening in the scene. And I, I got to watch the pilot and I thought I thought the footage was beautiful and it was wonderfully edited. Um, how did you become the editor for the Underground Railroad and was there anything in particular that drew you to that type of project and that kind of content? Uh, I mean, you've worked in the uh, African American or people of color entertainment space before with Moonlight, of course, but uh, <laughs> what drew you to that project? You know, I've known Barry Jenkins. We actually went to film school together. And so Moonlight was the first feature film that we collaborated on, but we've actually done um, collaborations um, from film school. He was my DP and I was actually his production designer. Um, and then we actually worked on a short film, Chlorophyll, that he um, directed back in 2015. And that was actually the first time we worked with Anna Lee, who's our sound supervisor um, and re-recording mixer. And so, you know, it's one of those things where working with Barry is such joy that it doesn't feel like it's actual work. And so um, we, while we were actually, when, you know, Moonlight was getting ready to be introduced to the world, Barry had the script for If Feel She Could Talk, and he also knew that he wanted to do The Underground Railroad. So I've been always aware of like, you know, those three projects have kind of been intertwined. And so I've always been aware that The Underground Railroad was going to happen at some point. Um, and then... Um, it was back in when we were just getting started on doing going to production for um, If Feel She Could Talk, Barry did the writer's room for the Underground Railroad back in 2018. And so, you know, I've been aware of the project for a while now. I knew it was on deck right after um, If Feel She Could Talk. And so I was very excited that we were actually going to tackle a series this time and not a film. And I'm actually, you know, it, you know, I'm happy that it was a series because I think it really gave us the time to bring Cora to life and allow people to see and experience her journey. Amazing. So you and Barry were like OGs from film school way back, buddy, buddy. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we're we your friends. Are. Yes. We like to have a good time. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And so then you co-edited a lot of things with Nate Sanders as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So what does what the creative process and the workflow look between you guys? Like, especially for the Underground Railroad, how do you break up, uh, you know, <laughs> the workload? <laughs> yeah. So Nat Sanders, um, we co-edited Moonlight and If Feel Street Could Talk. Um, and we also went to film school with Nat Barry and I. He was a year ahead of us. And then on the Underground Railroad, um, Nat actually wasn't on it. Um, it was another editor, Alex O'Flynn, who um, was the editor for the, the film, The Writer. Um, and Nat's actually working with Dustin Creighton on a film for Marvel, Shang-Chi. Um, and so he, you know, he had a conflict and couldn't do Underground. And so we, we worked with Alex O'Flynn, who did such a great job. He did um, chapters two, three, four, and um, chapter eight. And he just, you know, he brought 
everything that we needed um, onto the series and really, really was a great companion throughout all of this because, you know, the subject matter is so heavy and being able to collab collaborate with someone who is just such a gentle soul and so respectful of the material, um, I think was definitely a necessity in the process and we were happy to have them on board. The Underground Railroad, that's amazing that that's streaming now on Amazon, but you've had like a, a pretty amazing career with some great stuff. <laughs> so there's so few women and people of color that are nominated for Oscars, at least in the past. Mm -hmm. So what was it like to be part of the nominations for a groundbreaking film like Moonlight to be the first Black woman to ever be nominated for an Oscar for film editing? Yeah, you know, it was kind of, it, I, you know, I still pinch myself and Barry and I talk about like, did that really happen? Um, because, you know, Moonlight was the first feature film credit um, for my career and to be not only recognized by the Academy, but my peers um, for what we were able to achieve um, with that film was something that, you know, I, I you know, find myself to feel so blessed and so thankful for the career that I've been able to have and also taking the opportunity to shine a light on the lack of diversity and hopefully opening the doors for others to follow behind me. And so one of the things I definitely appreciate from the film community is recognizing the lack of diversity and trying to do something about it. You know, I think ignorance is one of the... <laughs> one of the things that a lot of people can pretend like, oh, but there's no diversity in editing. Um, but realizing, I think, you know, me being the first black female nominated, I think shined a light on, oh, you know, we um, definitely need to do better about the situation. Um, and I think there's been an increase in not only bringing females into it, but bringing, you know, diversity into the post-production process and giving access to opportunity to people who might not have been it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, I, can, um, I don't even remember what I was saying. Sorry. What was I? No, no problem <laughs> at all. You were talking about diversity and uh, oh, right, right. So in, yeah, yeah, um, so, yeah. Yeah, so, but yeah, just shining a light on that and bringing, you know, people in and having access to the opportunities that maybe they um, didn't exist um, prior to me being nominated is pretty cool. And it's one of the things that I definitely want to focus on is like not only giving people the access, but the opportunity to further career and post production and, you know, using my um, career as an inspiration to tell people, yes, not only can you get there, but you can have a chance to be involved in, in you know, filmmaking and series like Moonlight yeah. and the Underground Railroad. I, for one, am incredibly inspired by you. Oh, I do uh, a lot of work in pre-production, but there's oh, cool. so, yeah, you know, women were usually in like wardrobe or hair and makeup. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's so amazing to see like, you know, the uh, us breaking through into things yeah. that are in production or post-production. And yeah. uh, editing is a hugely male-dominated career. What were the challenges of, working in that environment or breaking into that? You know, it's, one of, it's, it's, it's interesting because I don't think a lot of people at the time were thinking that like, I wasn't like, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell the story. Um, Nat and I did a panel and Nat prior to, you know, doing Moonlight had done like, you know, I think three or four other feature films as an editor. And the moderator was like, Joy, you know, why, why now? Why are you just now, you know, choosing to do a feature film in your career. And I was like, well, this is the first film offered to me. You know, it wasn't like, but it was a white man asking me this question and in his mind, you know, it's like, if you want something, you go for it and get it. And I was like, you know, I have presented myself several times for feature films and wasn't hired for the job. It wasn't, I was just like, you know, Moonlight is where I want to start. You know, I've been out there grinding, um, trying to get, you know, an opportunity to edit. And it just was that Moonlight was the first time, you know, Barry was like, yes, you know, you are on board. And so it's one of those things where people have to understand, like, our career paths are oftentimes dictated by, you know, the color of our skin being male or female. And um, hopefully, you know, by me presenting myself and talking about it, 
is breaking down these barriers where people are like, oh, I need to give these people an opportunity. Maybe their resume doesn't reflect exactly what I want, but giving them a chance and realizing, yes, they are the person for the job. If there's no opportunity, there can be no experience. So I love that. I love that. <laughs> I know we're short on time. So one last question. Sure. Uh, what unique insights do you think the entertainment community missed out on not having female editors in the past? Well, I think, you know, um, some people may disagree with me, but I think females are so observant. We are very observant and we also have a really good intuition. And it's one of the things that, you know, I always am paying attention to not only pulling out the best performance from actors, but also making sure that their journey throughout the film or the series makes sense. And so I think having that innate intuition and that um, being a very observant person definitely is an asset to me as an editor. And I think that might've been something that, you know, is missing. There's some great female editors, I'm just saying. We're good oh, at what yeah. we do. <laughs> I bet, I bet. <laughs> All right, it has been an absolute pleasure talking with you, Joy. Aww. And I wish you the best in everything. I can't wait to see what you do next. And Thank you. go with blessings. Aww. Have a good one. You as well. Bye. Bye.